Hey folks, welcome into the PFI College Football Show. Michael McQuaid, delighted to be joined by Dark Harder. Connell Diggin as well, as we make our way into week one of the college football season. This is it, boys, until the end of November. We're doing this at least once a week. Uh, maybe we, we might get some special guests on. Uh, I believe Dar wants to get an old man from ESPN on, to talk about his hat situation in the Aviva last week, potentially. <laughs> but lads, um, great to see you. Before we start off, and I see all the crack, uh, I have to let people know that we're presented, not presented by, we're an affiliate of Homefield. And I've got the jerseys here that these lads should have by now, but I haven't posted them yet. If you want some cool college jerseys, here's an example, which I believe is Connell's, and he should I be getting. Him. And I'll, I'll, I'll probably, I'll, I'll, I'll try and fold that. I mean, people on the podcast <laughs> are wondering what's going on here. Here's a Clemson, amazing, t- like, look, th- these, t- these t-shirts are 10 out of 10. I probably should have followed that better, Dara. Sorry, one. But uh, <laughs> yes, Homefield Apparel. If folks, if you go to the Homefield website, you honestly have to check this out. Unreal stuff. Um, if you use code Ireland, you get 15% off your first order. Homefieldapparel.com. Thanks for support, folks. Pro Football Ireland is also brought to you by the official betting partner of the NFL in Ireland and the UK, E88 Sport. Dara, Kajem Aratatu. How, how's the form in the biggest? Dan Whedon fan and Cully Hanna anyway in Packers land at the minute college football Navy, baby Navy's biggest Dan Whedon fan on earth he wasn't obviously the most high profile of college player GC Davis I don't think we're going to be talking too much of it then this season but listen that's a that's a story for another day college football is finally here it's it's, it's great to get going after just an unbelievable weekend in Dublin couldn't have asked for anything better maybe could have asked for a better scoreline but <laughs> other than that just what a day that was Talk about that in a wee second. Connell, first off, are you prepped? Are you ready for week one, man, after your unbelievable debut last week? Yeah, I think this week was a, a, a stressful week for, I, th- I think, all of us here, especially with the game being in Dublin. Maybe it would have been a bit calmer if we were, you know, just had to stay up late on the Saturday night to watch the game. But there was a lot of people staying up late on Saturday night for other reasons, I guess. Um but yeah, like this should be a really good season. I think there's some really good games as well coming up this week that we're we're going to be previewing as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like Dara, let's just jump into that week zero game very quick because I think it would be a miss of us not to do so. Like we didn't really do one after the game because we were in the pressers and the time that I was over it was midnight. And I think people had sort of had their fill by that point. But you know, I said it on multiple different outlets now on Twitter and or X as Elon calls it this week. Sorry, Elon. It's just different outlets, Dara that it was such a good week, but the Saturday was unbelievable in in Dublin. I got to give props to Diggin for the quality camera work, and I'm sure he'll be looking at some sort of royalty for each clip that we're getting on TikTok because over a hundred thousand people have watched videos on TikTok. One of them was mine, are to be fair. However, a great weekend. Look, not not the best game. Like let let's not dress it up, but it was a great spectacle. And props to College Football Ireland. We used the Aviva. We had the crack. Um, and the Dara himself, which we'll talk about in a second, um, Connell, sorry, Connell himself, Dara had a great, uh, great experience chatting to Sam Hartman and co in in the in the press room as well. He did indeed. It was a he looked like a a grizzled veteran in that. Uh, I was pretty jealous of him <laughs> watching on from the back rows. Uh, yeah, listen, it was a great atmosphere at the stadium. Probably the best atmosphere we've got for a game so far uh, in Dublin. I mean, just the flyover, which as been really well reviewed on your TikTok, Michael. Has um, <laughs> it's gone over well with the the lesser fans of college football. But listen, what a what a spectacle it was! From they really know how to dress it up. The college football Ireland ones, to be fair to them, uh, for a game that obviously was lacking in much competitiveness after about one drive or so. You know, uh, like Notre Dame exceeded the expectations, blew expectations out of the water. We knew that when we didn't think they'd look nearly as dominant as they did. Um, they, ah, fuck, they answered some serious question marks on the offensive side of the ball. Just, ah, I couldn't get over what a start from them. And I, they're immediately, immediately college contenders this season. Well, as we were joking there now, like great crack at the weekend. Like I, it was great seeing you lads enjoy it because like that's, I think for you, Connell, it was your first time up there and stuff like that. It brought me back to my youth two years ago as a 31-year-old man <laughs> going into the press box for the first time. No, look, it, it was great crack. I, I really enjoyed the weekend. I think, you know, I think it's it, it would be a miss of me not to say thanks to both of you boys because I know 
people listen to this, Dars and Arma man, Connell's a carry man, and like there was serious travel involved. So like I know I I I know I appreciate it, and I'm not lying when I say publicly that like the serious amount of people messaging us saying like just even myself privately saying how much they enjoyed it. Big shout out to Gary who put a comment on our podcast saying that he thought the coverage was ten out of ten last week, and thanks to everybody that came to our tailgate last week. Um. Uh, actually, we have also anything else to go back on that call? Uh, well, first off, I want to thank the the guy from who was in our uh, premiere who said I looked like um, Drew Pine, <laughs> the former <laughs> Notre Dame quarterback, which I just found very funny. Um, um, but yeah, like this week was was absolutely amazing. Like I know the the game maybe wasn't entertaining, but you know, like being down on the field, like that moment where the two teams even ran onto the field, like I thought I was like going out onto the field getting ready to play for Ireland like that's how much it like I was like immersed in it just being to the side of the field it was it was absolutely amazing and like uh, it's it's one of the most like out of body experiences like I've kind of ever had because you're just there and like I was still recording stuff but I was still like just watching it anyway so I knew what was going on at all times and it was uh, like I can't even put into words really of how that game was it was great crack it, it was such a good day and obviously props to college football ireland and just props to everybody involved in it and we appreciated being there and i liked the 7 30 kickoff it, it was great crack props to marcus freeman and also for things that people don't see the people in charge of notre, of notre dame pr especially were excellent so i really appreciate that and shout out to scott with the navy pr also I don't think it'll be long, guys, before we've seen Notre Dame back in Dublin. I'm going to guess before 2027, even as an away team. I'm just going to put it out there. Right, I promised this last week, and I want to hear, like, and if you haven't prepared for this, boys, don't worry, but just, you know, if you have to wing it, you can wing it, because it's very difficult to give a top four and guess what's going to happen this season. But first off, I mean, are we all in agreement that we feel that Georgia are going to be that number one at the end of the season yeah like or does anybody disagree with that and we can go into all conversation it's difficult to see anyone other than georgia holding down number one at the end of the year the only real questions are with carson back their new quarterback but like he only has to play at an average level even a below average level we'll see them winning most games by two scores or more they are so far ahead of the curve in terms of player recruitment player development and just maximizing the talents of everyone on their in their school it's it's really it's rivaling the alabama peak days is, is what is the level kirby smart has georgia operating at right now um i suppose if you want me to just jump straight in with my with my top four go for it uh, fire away uh, as i said georgia at number one number two i've got michigan coming out of the big 10 as big 10 champions um, number three, I've got Washington making it for the first time out of the Pac-12. Oh, Listen, oh. the Pac-12 usually beats itself to death every year and then subsequently misses out on a spot. I think this is the year where they get in and two other conferences, the ACC with Clemson and Florida State and the Big 12 with a handful of good teams down there. I think those are the conferences that end up missing out. She means my fourth team is going to be a team that doesn't win its conference and that's going to be Penn State and that may come as a surprise i've got look there's three three big big dogs in the big 10 right now that's michigan who i have winning at penn state and then of course ohio state i think each of those teams beats each other i think we see michigan beat ohio state i think we see penn state lose to ohio state but beat michigan at home i think that's got to be all of those teams will finish the year with one loss and penn state will just edge out Ohio State for that final spot considering Michigan will have beaten Ohio State in their last game so I think that's that's the four I'm going with look it's a everything can change as the year goes by but those are the four teams I feel really really good about right now you could make an argument for perhaps USC over Washington in the Pac-12 but I think that uh, Michael Penix Jr their quarterback I think he's going to go on a Heisman run this year he's one of the best talents in college football I mean Really excited to see what he can do this year. Reminder to me to insert a Heisman segment on the 2024 Week 1 show as well. We'll react yeah. to the Heisman. It's <laughs> going to be my bad. I, Colin, I love what Doris in there about Penn State because they've got a really young core of talent there that could really rise up this season and literally go maybe 11-1, and 10-2 if, if it goes away, definitely down the stretch. I mean, for me, 
I haven't got Penn State. I was considering it. I've got them maybe fifth or sixth if it if it has that sort of season. I'm gonna say Georgia. I'm gonna say Michigan, and I'm gonna be con. But it's not even controversial. I'm gonna say Alabama, come back, and get back into the top four and third. And I'm gonna say Ohio State fourth. So I I feel like for me, Connell, that is my top four. I'd love to not be born and put like a completely like irrelevant school in the four. And maybe, like maybe go like a little bit of Cincinnati a couple of years ago and just just come in and have a bit of crack. But maybe you want to give us some sort of belief that this season could give us the unexpected, especially when we're in the final year before the whole thing goes mental with with realignment. Yeah, well, you know, I I agree with both of you that like the the Michigan and Georgia are kind of locked in. I mean, if you look at their schedules, it's they're they're fairly easy schedules. I mean, like. Yeah, Michigan play Ohio State and Penn State, but you'd expect for them to win one of those games. And even then, like they're they're still one of the best teams. I'd feel like even there's still a chance if they lost two games, if they got into a conference championship game for whatever reason, they could easily make the college football playoff. And then Georgia also have a really easy schedule. Like they they only play I think two or three ranked teams, and like it's not like any of the really high ranked teams. Then. Number three, I had Alabama, but it's basically a case of I think the way they're going to try and do it is they don't want to have just like two SEC schools and two Big Ten schools because I think that would maybe lose a little bit of interest even if they were so big. So if it's not Alabama, then it's kind of Ohio State. I feel like they kind of would just flip depending on record. I mean, you never know. Like one of those teams could go 0-12 this year. And then as my fourth team, I flip-flopped between Florida State and USC but I ended up going with USC kind of at the last minute just because I'm like the Caleb Williams factor and the Lincoln Riley factor of like, you know, offensive, insane quarterback mixed with um, quarterback guru Lincoln Riley, who's already had like two or three, actually, yeah, three Heisman winning quarterbacks now with Caleb Williams there. Um, I just kind of feel like, they would play and I also think you know if they ended up playing Georgia in the college football playoff you know that elite Georgia defense against Caleb Williams it would be insane I, I feel like there's a, there's an awful lot to come here and I, and I know that there's a lot of people maybe listening to this for the first time that um, are NFL fans and are trying to get into college football so we will try and get them such concise analysis that you boys have just done there now so we, we 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 certainly appreciate it boys i guess the first thing talking about the nfl a guy that used to coach in the nfl let's let's look at this big first sort of storyline going into week one uh jim harbour is suspended for the first three games of the season it's a self-imposed suspension from the team because of alleged violations i must stress it's alleged during the COVID 19 dead period do you remember COVID 19 boys back in the day you bought yourself in school back then. It was it was. No, mad we were young ones back then. Those three years. Yeah, and, yeah, it was and, great. And, and it was a great year. The one time <laughs> I, I, was, did, was well, I was in Ty, so I didn't even miss anything. <laughs> Here, at least with the whole COVID sort of year, we 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 got to see Sam Hartman last weekend in Dublin. Now, just to say on that FSU point, if they do finish fourth or third, even. That's a hell of a way to sell a game in Dublin next year. We will come back to that because we're going to look at the FSU game down the stretch. Dara, do you feel like this seems like some sort of genius tactics for Michigan? Because looking at their schedule for a start, I mean, do they play a, a ranked team until it's, uh, I can November tell you right when now, they play Penn State? It, it's, um, it's East Carolina, UNLV, which is Las Vegas, Nevada, and Bowling yep. Green, who... I mean, they're going to win every one of those games by 30 points. Jim Har or Harbaugh could be on defense for the other team as a 12th player, and they're still going to destroy them. Look, it's a it's a, it's a, a self-imposed van, which is not something totally unheard of in college football or in college sports. Uh, those who remember back to the whole uh, Laramie Tulsa, Ole Miss, all those allegations, Ole Miss self-imposed a bowl ban on themselves since they were excluded from the playoff and any bowl games in the postseason. Uh, that was self-imposed. It's basically a smart tactic to get the NCAA, NCAA off your back. It's kind of a way to say, look, oh, we're sorry. Look at us punishing ourselves. Now please leave us alone. Which is a pretty smart idea from, from Michigan who obviously don't want this, this situation to bleed into 
the business end of the season where they are they have a real chance of winning their first national championship under Harbaugh. So yeah, I mean, look, it's it's a smart move from Michigan. It's not going to mean a whole pile going into his first three games. They're not going to struggle without him. Uh, uh, Connell, Joe Harbaugh is 74-25 as head coach of the Wolverines in his nine years. I mean, you're talking about being young back in the day. I feel like he was in the NFL like two years ago. Ninth season at Michigan. For people coming into it, that's just alma mater also. And also, Connell, like, I mean, there were sources indicating a few months ago before this whole thing came out that he could have got up to six games suspension. Sorry, six games is benefit for a level one violation. So it's interesting to see this free game thing. But as as Dara said, it is not the code leave insert or GCSE English. It is much ado about nothing because they're going to walk over these boys, aren't they? I mean, like, it's it's easy. And even if they did have the six game suspension, I think it really would have only mattered until the sixth game because I believe, I'm not 100% sure on this because I don't have it up in front of me, but I think they play Michigan State in like week six or seven, something like that. So it wouldn't have really mattered even for the first five games of that. And like the the people, like this this hasn't mattered so much that they have three, well actually four different head coaches for each of the games because in game one, it's going to be their defensive coordinator. Game two, the first half, Jim Harbaugh has put his son in charge of the first half and then their running backs coach in charge of the second half. And then the offensive coordinator will be in charge for the whole of the third game. And it's like, it's just a really weird situation because like supposedly one of the things that Harbaugh did that he's being suspended for was he brought them kind of just to a restaurant and he bought them burgers. Like the recruits, he bought them burgers and he's getting suspended partially because of that. So it's like, it's a little bit of a, a, a stupid situation, I guess. But, I, I, you know, you, you mentioned earlier as well that Harbaugh had like a pretty decent record and it, the, it that it's a, it's a really impressive record. The only problem is He's actually played, I believe, in seven bowl games or eight bowl games. It's seven bowl games. And he's only won one, and that was in his first year in 2015, and he hasn't won one since. So I don't know. Like, that's why I'm still, like, I hope, like, that my prediction can be right and they do do well this year. But then it's like, can they get over the hump, I guess? We'll have to see. I love how nobody, after all the talk that we had last week in Aviva and after how everyone talks about Notre Dame, yes, they were ranked 13th one of this season. Not one of us picked him to even creep into the fourth spot, which shows you how competitive <laughs> everything is. Um, yeah, look, it's going to be interesting. Burgers, that, that's a whopper of a story there. Let's Gosh. look at this first. That was awful, wasn't it? Jesus, that was just atrocious. Sorry, boys. Let's, oh, look, <laughs> let, let's look at this first game. We're going to look, we're, we're, we're going to look at LSU, FSU. LSU, man, a few years ago they were unbelievable. But I, the thing that I love, Dara, about this time of the year, whenever the NFL season hasn't started, look, you obviously have got decent games on the Saturday, but you've got this prime time Sunday slot before the NFL kicks off next week, where you got LSU, FSU, a massive top ten showdown for week one of the college football season. Number five LSU, number eight Florida State, in a rematch. SEC, SEC, two teams that are going to be in it coming to the end of the year. You know, LSU come into a season where they had the SEC West title last year. They've still got a very talented roster with Jaden Daniels. Florida State, who we're going to see, hopefully, please God, in Dublin next year. You know, they're coming off the team's first team, sorry, first 10 win season since 2016. And you got Jordan Travis there also. Look, this is a hell of a game. So, how do you pick a winner? And as I, th- I feel like, should we shy away from picking a winner if we look at certain games? Because for me, I just want to sit down and enjoy these, de- just enjoy this game because it's a perfect game to start the season off with. Yeah, picking a winner in these big time college football games is just, uh, there's no hope for it. Um, you said they're SEC versus ACC. I've always found it funny. This is completely separate from the game, but in a Northern Irish accent, they sound the exact same. SEC and SEC, SEC like it's, it's impossible <laughs> to differentiate them. I've always found that like annoying, and it's, it makes me want to put on an American accent when I'm talking about them. But listen, this is why we two... started this podcast, Star. That yeah. is why we just started this podcast. Iron what you said, issues like... like this. <laughs> so listen, um, they're they're two teams with sky high expectations, and they will actually talk about the teams today. I promise. Um, Florida State have a. Jared Versch coming back as an edge rusher. He would have been a first round pick last year. Expect big, big things out of him this season. Uh, he decided to stay back for an extra season. 
Um, on the other side, LSU are coming off like a sort of surprising SEC West win last year. It's it's one of the things. It'd be a good trivia question in a few years because they weren't overly impressive all year. Just kind of snuck into that slot after Alabama and picked up a few losses, and all of a sudden they were facing Georgia and Atlanta last December. So, um, both both teams are going to be really really looking forward to this one it's in orlando i believe last year it was in new orleans so there's not going to be that home team aspect of it really even though we'll probably see a lot more florida state fans there than lsu just because it's in florida and um, this is i'm really really looking forward to it as you say it's sunday night it's it's one of the rare occasions where we get to enjoy uh college football on a sunday night instead of a saturday it, it really has an nfl feel with these games and therefore if you're just getting into the sport, I think it's a great game to watch to to start off to get you really settled into the sport because it's it feels like an NFL game. They always do, and hopefully for fans in Ireland and the UK, there actually will be somewhere to watch the game. Stay tuned on that. <laughs> uh, Connell, FSU are going to be one of the favourites to win an SEC title. Like this is like as as Dara said, there this is a hell of a game. You know when you've got guys for LSU coming back like Harold Perkins. You just want to sit down and just enjoy it, man. Like, yeah, I mean, these two teams are absolutely amazing and, like, will be favorites for any of their things. And, I mean, if LSU just didn't have, you know, Alabama to play pretty much every year, you'd put them down as a favorite, you know, nine out of ten times, basically. And I'm really interested. There's a lot of really, really good players for both teams. Like, on uh, FSU's side, they have a wide receiver who transferred in from Michigan State, Keon Coleman. He's like six foot four, just, you know, the prototypical jump ball receiver type of guy. And um, he actually, at, at Michigan State, he played basketball there. And if you know anything about college basketball, Michigan State are one of the like premier type programs over there. So, you know, he, he's that level of athlete. And then you get over to LSU side and they have Jalen Daniels, who's, you know, second favorite right now for the Heisman Trophy. And you know, they like he had an amazing year last year, threw for I think two thousand five hundred yards, something like that, and rushed for eight hundred and had like thirty touchdowns total last year. It was just amazing. And I think he's coming in with even more confidence this year after an amazing, you know, end to last year. And it, it's gonna be a really interesting matchup. And I think this is really good as well for fans in Ireland because there's gonna be people who are playing in this game for Florida State who you know, you'll get to go and watch and see in person next year, which I think is makes it even more interesting for us on our side anyway. Right, I said we were going to do it, but you know what, boys? We're going to do it. We're going to do it. LSU, our favourites at the moment, at the time of recording, minus two and a half on the spread. Uh, the game total is over 58 and a half. Forward. Look, we're not going to shout odds here. I'm just going to say, I think FSU, in terms of the spread, caused the upset. It's not an upset. It's an even game. I think Dar, I think it'll be a great game. Who, who's going to win if we're going to start a whole competition here? And we're all like, oh my god, I picked it right. You didn't. Okay, so yeah, we'll do that. We'll do one game each week for the picks. Um, and we can, okay. we can keep a tally. We can keep yeah, a we tally. keep a tally. Uh, and the give loser, me... the loser, like the the worst person, has to basically pay everyone to either get down to Kerry, <laughs> Arma, or Dungallus. I thought Hopefully, I thought you were going to say Dungallus for us. I thought you were going to say the national championship game, pay, pay their way over there, but um, that's okay. Ooh. Well, hopefully you lose them, um, Michael. Um, I live with... watch along with that, and we'll, I'll, I'll have some pints, and like, the, the person has to pay for it. They... That could work. That could actually work, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm up for that. We'll go, uh, I'll go LSU week one, which I'm playing it safe now that I'm scared because we opened up these odds, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think LSU just have a slight advantage. There can't be up more than a touchdown in this game. I have zero clue. Like, you could ask me five minutes ago, I would have picked, <laughs> like, Florida State, and you could ask me five minutes from now, and I'd pick LSU. Like, there's there's pretty much nothing separating these teams as there was last Heck year, one. where there Heck was... One. It was one point in it last year as well. So it's not even, like, that bad. So I was like, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to go with the team who I had kind of maybe making the college football playoff, and that's going to be FSU. I think they win this one. I love it. I love it. Uh, at the moment, we can't watch that game on TV here, but we believe me, I sent a very strongly worded article, or an email, sorry, I'm writing too many articles. I sent a very strongly worded email to TNT Discovery this week, folks. Maybe that might fix everything, who knows. 
If not, I'm sure the us three boys can start, you know, commentating and doing live watch alongs. We'll, we'll see. More to come on that. Uh, going in terms of what Dara said around talking in, in, in a Nordy accent around the SEC and SEC, we've now got Sarf, South Carolina <laughs> and North Carolina. You're going to think about it every yeah. single time now when you say one of them. It bugs me. It's bugged me for years. <laughs> And it's 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 a big border rivalry. No, it's it's not it's not Monon against Tyrone here or Armagh against Cavan or anything, yeah. but it's a big border rivalry. Look, North Carolina, South Carolina, again when you've got that SEC SEC matchup, I think I think Lee and the lads from ESPN with Mr. McAfee who debuts next week, they're all down there and it's it's gonna be great crack. But you know, when you've got probably a top two quarterback in Drake May having the ability to go in here now, last year you get over 4,000 yards, nearly 40 touchdowns on the year. That's going to be awesome to see. For South Carolina, you know, they feel like they belong in the talk that we had at the start, but we didn't include them in it. And, you know, you, you look at the, the performances that they had last year, they played Clemson. I am really intrigued to see what you lads have to say about this game because I think this is, like, this is the game, like, this is a far better game than FSU, LSU, boys. I, I'm loving this. I'm loving the border rivalry. I think the atmosphere will be 10 out of 10. Dara, pump it up even more. Is this going to be the game of the week? Um, It'll be the game of the Saturday anyway. Saturday's not looking great um, in terms of in terms of week one. Uh, I'd, I'd feel pretty confident with that, yeah. There's a reason game day have gone there. It'll it'll be a good atmosphere in Carolina, obviously. It's, it's, a, it's a matchup that doesn't happen every year, probably should happen every year, just given the the um the rivalry that's in it. I think all eyes yep. will be on Drake May, as you said, North Carolina's quarterback. He could be he's a real good candidate for a top three overall pick next year. We just haven't seen much of him, but what we have seen has been so so impressive. South Carolina are coming off two back to back seasons of overachieving. They play in obviously the toughest conference in the sport, but they continue to just get the job done and I'm really high on their head coach and their overall structure that they've built there in the last couple of years. I'm going to give the edge to North Carolina just because I think they're better at quarterback. And I think that, again, this is as close to call as the last game was, but um, I, I think North Carolina just had the edge on them. And we're just doing this, Connell, just, to, just so I'm not getting in trouble here, we're just doing this we is on the first game aren't we yeah but i mean look i'll i'll take the tar heels as well i think yeah like it just seems like but i feel like the quarterback would too much for them but i feel like they'll have that momentum going into south carolina and getting the win uh i actually disagree with both of you and i because i really i really like like south carolina i think they're not ranked but they, i believe they're the second they got the second most votes of the non-ranked teams they're only behind texas tech and like some of the wins they had last year, it was a re it, it was same similar to LSU where it was a strange year where they kind of lost some games they shouldn't have lost, but they won some amazing games. I mean, they managed to beat Tennessee in a game where they just they blew them out. They like Spencer Rattler, their quarterback, who a couple of years ago was basically tipped to be a number one or number at least top five overall pick at quarterback, and then lost out to Caleb or Caleb Williams at Oklahoma. And then he's came here, had a really bad like first start to the season, and then went and put up the six touchdowns, like I said, against Tennessee, and then had a really good game against Clemson to end the season. Um, I'm I'm quite high on them, and I think they have some really good players. And I, I'm I hope I'm right because it would just be it's just nice to be right, I guess. Um, up the Gamecocks, as they say in South Carolina. What what are the for a team, boys? Um. Looking at that, like well, let uh, let's look at our last game here. You know, we, we'll, we'll look at the Horn Frogs in TCU that had a Not hell of a run last year. That well, yeah, definitely in my accent, you're right there. This is turning into a whole thing here. I just need to stop it already. <laughs> it's week one. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, TCU went up against the Buffaloes in terms of the Colorado Buffaloes, as we said in the Aviva last week, like Todd Bowley esque. They bring prime Deion Sanders in. He's immediately brought. The Lion King, the prodigal son, the Shatter, whatever. I, I can't remember his first name. Sanders' son is in a quarterback, but the reality is how set up are this team? Uh, a guy that I got the opportunity to meet was the former Steelers quarterback, Cordell Stewart. His son is on the roster for, for Colorado, and whenever I got the chance to meet him in May, 
honestly lads i think he talked for like five minutes about how impressed he was not just with colorado but with sanders he basically said that sanders gives a damn about his son really really cares about his future and he has bought into it and i i don't blame him. i can see the passion in his face i guess star the biggest question and if you want to maybe revamp there also in tcu but the biggest question for colorado is can you really make such a change in such a short period of time it seems very unlikely it's been over 20 it's almost i think it's 25 years this year or 24 years since they were last number one in the country i think it's going to take them like a wee while yet to actually get to the point where where they want to be but this season is probably going to be a bit building tcu is an interesting one as well man. yeah absolutely it's it's a lot more than a one-year prospect but at Colorado and um, look Connell's the, the Colorado uh, reporter of this team so I think I'm going to focus on TCU just to start off with um, they're obviously coming off of the biggest championship blowout that the sport has ever seen they've moved on from Max Duggan who's now part of the oh, he's one of the LA teams in the in the NFL he played in preseason he, he's on one in Stetson Bennett's Chargers in he's in the Chargers yeah Bennett's in the Rams uh, they oh, Speaking of Chargers, Quentin Johnson, their star wide receiver from last year, he's also gone. So it's going to be a, a big change in the, a big shift in the offense at TCU. They're still right in the thick of things to win the Big 12 this year, uh, to repeat as champions and hold on to their uh, crown. It'll be Chandler Morris in at quarterback for TCU. He played a little bit last year in sort of garbage time, although TCU didn't have much of it. They seemed to win every game by a touchdown or less. Um, and then he, like he's in his fourth year, I believe, in college football, started off in Oklahoma. So um, there'll be th- big things expected of Morris. To, he's got a massive shoes to fill with what Max Dogan was able to accomplish last year. The, the Horn Frogs are massive favorites in this game. Um, it's just the reality of playing against a Colorado team that struggled by daily last year. But a, ve- a game I'm definitely looking forward to watching just because it's a brilliant storyline, Sanders' first game in college football. Yeah, currently Dara uh, and Anne Connell. Why am I, I keep getting your boys' names mixed up? I mean, we literally stood together last week in a studio yeah, come on, on one day, and then like, oh, boy, it's just, it's just late at night. I'll get it right by week six or week seven. Connell, as Dara said, the Horned Frogs. I'm not calling them TC. I'm going to call them the Horned Frogs. They're one to twelve on. Like literally, Colorado are not fans in this game at all. Never mind the fact they have to travel to Texas to take on TCU. And look, there could be a wee bit of a hangover there, though, from last year. No? I think that's that's kind of what I was thinking of when I was kind of looking at this. I was like, they're a ranked team, but I don't know how much of them being a ranked team right now is just because of, you know, it's just kind of like a carryover from last year type effect. You know, it would be really interesting to, say, to see because their head coach, Sonny Dykes, is actually, like, incredibly underrated, like, he was former SMU coach, so he's you know been around Texas. He knows how to you know deal with what's going on in Texas and everything like that. So I'm really interested to see how they do this year. Whether they're ranked at the end of the year, probably not. But they won't be. I don't think they have a losing record at the end of the year. It's the best way I could put it for them. And then Colorado coming into this, they're they're pretty much an unknown quantity. Like you don't know they could get blown out, or this could be an incredibly close game. They could win this game. We, we just don't really know. I think the person, if you're watching this game, you have to watch out for, and you pretty much can't miss him because he'll be on the field for every single play. As it stands, it would be Travis Hunter because he's going to be playing cornerback and he's played, sorry, he is a cornerback and, then, and he's been playing some wide receiver for them as well in practice because he's just that good. He's a former uh, top recruit in the country as well. So, you know, that's, that's how good of a player he is. And then Shador Sanders at, quarterback as well be, will be really interesting to see so it's basically an entirely new program from one that went to one and 11 last year because they brought in 50 new players and 56 players left in the transfer portal so it, it's going to be uh, and it's going to be a new team if you watch them last year they will not be the same team I know it's going to be interesting I, I, that's the most for me that's the most intriguing storyline this year is seeing what's going to happen there so we'll, we'll see what happens other games to note in week one include Florida at Utah on Thursday night. You've also got West Virginia at Penn State on Saturday. Boise State, Diggins' big team here. At yeah. Washington on Saturday. Clemson at Duke on Monday. 
Coastal Carolina also at UCLA on Saturday. Folks, if we went through every game in college football, we'd be here until <laughs> next week. So we're not going to do that. That's why I enjoy this podcast so much. We're through a few things. Uh, I will say this, folks, before we go, please do reach out to us. We're at NFL Ireland on all social media. Um, I will drop these two young gentlemen's social logins uh, in the comments. Please not my do login. let us know any questions. <laughs> Wait, <I'm with> your <laughs> last username and password <laughs> in the description. I'll also get your 16 digit card number and the CVC in the back. Um, I will drop these two lads' social handles for different platforms in the notes. I would say, folks, some great feedback, some great comments from week zero. Please keep that coming. If you feel that the show can be improved in a certain way, let us know. If there's anything that we can do to make it more interesting for you, let us know. If you're not sure on some of the rules, let us know. That's what we're here for. We're here for you. We're here to try and build up the college scene in Ireland and we massively appreciate everyone coming on listening watching this podcast remember use code homefield at homefield apparel for 15% off and maybe like me you can steal Dara's t-shirt and wear it yourself Clemson t-shirt which will be in the post before week four Dara and lo- lovely t-shirt the stuff at homefield boys is 10 out of 10 I'm definitely going to get myself another dame big ha- big jacket which they put up last week and they've also you want a hat by any boxes chance? I, I heard that. I, I heard there might be hats going around somewhere, lads. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, Don't tell the kids, man. We- <laughs> oh my god! That has been week one for the PFI College Football Show. We hope you enjoy the first week of the college football season. If you've enjoyed this YouTube video or podcast, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your ma, tell your dad. Get them to listen to the podcast. It's good crack, boys. I'll see you next week. This is a great crack. Chat to you soon.